much of one, but it is a fault line through that stone. So we went 18 inches over to this side, took our hammers and chisels and started marking the stone up and down and up and down. Finally, a big chunk popped out of there. Pushed it off to the side, looked back in the bottom. There was a small, dark hole about that big. It didn't look very promising at all. I had my son hand me the flashlight. We had had them sitting where we could see. This was all down in a tunnel. And so I put it up to that hole, and there was a big cave chamber back behind there. Have you ever had goosebumps and all of that sort of thing just overwhelm you? Well, that's what happened to me. It didn't take us very long to make the hole big enough to get in. I thought the Ark of the Covenant would be sitting right there. But it wasn't. <laughs> okay. So since we had to leave the next morning, we plugged that hole. We came back to the surface, plugged the hole, fixed everything up so nobody could tell where we had been and left. I had to go home, work, save up some more money to come back. But eventually, I found the Ark of the Covenant, and it was in a chamber that I would not have bothered going in, just like I wouldn't have bothered breaking through the wall. My two sons had gotten very ill in 1982. Uh, uh, I sent one of them home Christmas Eve. The other one home New Year's Eve. I owed the hotel $300. I had no money at all. As a friendly Arab let me seat at his restaurant. And that, folks, to me is humiliating. Now, there are some things that I'm not comfortable with, and I was experiencing several of them that trip. I decided that I was going to find the Ark of the Covenant or die in the hole. This may sound a little melodramatic, but I was humiliated. I couldn't pay my bill at the hotel. I'd rather be dead than in a situation like that. And that's not good logic. So don't go down and do likewise on that one. So anyway, the, the little Arab guy that was letting us eat at his restaurant, he was a full-grown man, but he's about that tall and small, the teeth. So as we went through this cave system, he would crawl into the chambers, and I'd give him a light, and he'd shine it around, and I'd peek through to see if it looked like anything in there. So we did this over and over, and uh, we came to this one hole. After we, had, I mean, you wouldn't believe where all we had gone in that cave. However, how many of you have ever been inside a big cave? The tunnels and chambers and all. Hey, you know what I'm saying? We had just been all over the place, up and down, different levels. And at this point in time, we had gone about 45 feet down and then back up. And here this hole was in the wall, about that big around, and it, there was a stalactite hanging right down the middle of it. It's the only <coughs> stalactite I had seen in the cave that wasn't just little ones. This was a big one, and I have it in my collection of things. So I broke it off, made the hole big enough for him to get in, and he was crawling in there, and I started to hand him the light so he could do what we had been doing, you know, several days. He came tearing out of there. His mind, uh, eyes were big as human eyes can get. And he said, what's in there? What's in there? I'm not going back in there. And I said, well, what did you see? He said, I didn't see anything. And I thought, well, okay. Now, he had been in tighter places than that and had not responded that way. So I got this little beam of light, you know, in a very <laughs> dark place here. <laughs> and I thought, that is divine terror. You know, that's supernatural terror. So I figured there's got to, that is either where the Ark of the Covenant is or it's the way to get to it, one or the other. And God doesn't want this fella to know where it is. So anyway, 
he said, he, he just said, I, I am, I must get out of here. So off he went. So I made the hole big enough for me to get in. I got in there, and folks, it was full of rocks, bigger than these here, up to within 18 inches or so of the seat. If this young man hadn't been terrorized and come scooting out of there like he did, I would not have gone in that place. But who needs rocks? We've been moving thousands of them for three years. So anyway, I crawled in there with the flashlight, and I crawled around on top of the rocks, and I shined the light down between the cracks in the rock, and there a gold, flat gold thing reflected back at me. So I moved over and shined down to another. There was two reflections, one here, one there, and one over here. So I knew it was a flat gold top. And I thought, the Ark of the Covenant, I forgot about the cherubim, you know, sitting on top. They'd have been poking up through it. That was the top of the mercy seat. But anyway, I started moving these rocks, and I stuck them everywhere I could. By the time I got down to that gold surface, I had them behind my shoulders, leaning back against them, and uh, it, turned, it was the table of showbread. Well, hey, that's not a bad thing, huh? <laughs> but anyway, I was looking for the Ark of the Covenant, and it was only then that I took time to carefully examine the rest of the chamber. See, I had just crawled in, took a quick look, and started checking down under the rocks. So as I moved the flashlight along the wall, I saw a stone box sitting against the wall about this low, this much space between it and the ceiling. The lid was broke, slid around, and right above it was a crack with dark brown looking material at the bottom of, on the bottom of this crack. And I was able to see the top of the lid of the box. On both sides of the broken pieces was more of this brown stuff. All of a sudden I realized I was sitting in front of the Ark of the Covenant. And that Christ's blood had come down. I had never heard anybody preach anything about that sort of possibility. Never. And it was too much for me. I, when I regained consciousness and looked at my watch again, 45 minutes had passed from the time I crawled in the chamber. Because I figured I'd find the Ark of the Covenant in there, I wanted to know what time it was. So anyway, it was 2 o'clock when I entered the chamber. And after I regained consciousness, it was 2.45. I couldn't see down in there, but I knew what it was. So anyway, I was... The way I had gotten in there was approximately 90 feet through little tight squeezes and chambers and caves, uh, tunnels, and I knew I couldn't get it out. Now, I had asked for a sign about the Ark of the Covenant, and that had to do with money. I needed $10,000. The IRS was giving me a horrible time. They disallowed my deduction for my children. And I mean, they were uh, young teenagers, you know. They were not overage. There was no reason on earth why they should do that, except the devil controls the IRS. If God, and I, God allows it to some extent. There's a lot of things we will understand better later. I kind of felt that God picked on Job a bit. But there was a reason for it. Uh, you know, those of us who live down here uh, will probably experience some things similar to that. But anyway, I sat there and I cried and I said, God, you promised me I would get this out this trip because I had gotten the $10,000 
that I needed from an ex unexpected source. And so I got this big strong impression 